I'm Mae McDonough. This is the Psychedelic Cherry, and today we're talking about bread It's me, Mae McDonough. Welcome back to the Psychedelic Cherry. Sorry it's been such a long time. Um, I saw some of you commenting about that and you know it's been kind of a crazy year for me so far. So that said, um, today I wanted to talk about the breadboard. Can you see that? And I thought the best way to do that was to actually just kind of do a breadboard project with you. So we are going to do a project straight out of electronics for dummies. If you don't have this book, go get it. Although you don't need it for this project. <laughs> uh, this is called the coin toss machine. Basically, we're going to take our fingers and touch them to the machine and two little lights will go off, a red one and a green one. They'll go off randomly and when you let go, either the red one will stay on or the green one will stay on. And that's kind of to simulate heads versus tails. It'll help you make decisions if you can't make decisions for yourself. Um, so it's a very simple but very cool project and it's going to help you understand circuitry basics as well as specifically breadboard basics. All right, so uh, let's talk about how a breadboard works. A breadboard is made up of little holes. We call those contact holes. Um, and it's broken down basically into two sections, the outer sections here between the blue and red lines and the inner section. Let's talk about the inner section first. So the inner sections have two sections here divided by a ditch and as you can see in each section there are five contact holes and each of those five contact holes in each row are connected so these five are connected these five are connected these five are connected it's like they're wired together and each grouping of five is called a terminal in these sections is where you're going to be putting resistors, capacitors, transistors, all those sorts of things. We'll get to that later. Um, these five are not connected to these five. Nothing is connected over this ditch. That's important. All right, let, now let's talk about the uh, outer sections. So unlike the inner sections, these are not grouped in five, although it looks like they are. These are actually uh, vertical connections that go all the way down. So there's two connections in each. This one and this one. This one and this one. And um, they're connected just like they're wired together. Uh, just like the other ones. And typically this is where you're going to put your voltage source input and this is where you're going to put your ground outs. So ultimately, these bus strips, which is what they're called, uh, are what you're using for those purposes. Last but not least, if you need to refer to anything inside the breadboard, you can use these trusty little uh, system of alphabet to refer to the columns and numbers to refer to the rows. In a nutshell, that's how a breadboard works. and. Uh, with that said, let's talk about what we need to do this project. Okay, you're going to need a solderless breadboard, a jumper wire kit, an LM555 timer IC chip. Um, you're going to need one 1K ohm resistor, one 10K ohm resistor, two 470 ohm resistors. You're going to need a red LED, a green LED, a 0.1 microfarad polyester film capacitor, a 9 volt battery, a fresh one, and of course a 9 volt battery snap. And uh, if you have all these things, we are ready to go. All right, so <clears throat> the first thing we're gonna do 
is pull out our LM555 IC chip, the timer we're using, you can see it. Now, <clears throat> if you look at this IC chip, hopefully you can see it, there it is, there's a little dot. That dot in the upper corner represents pin one. There are eight pins, and starting at one, you're gonna go down and around counting to eight. One, two, three, four, and then up, five, six, seven, eight, all the way to the top. So we're gonna put pin one in E14 and let pin eight go across the ditch and let all the others go in below it so that it looks just like this. So step two, we're gonna use a jumper wire. Mine looks like this. Yours might not have the uh, heat wrap color coating on it. It might just look like a wire, that's okay. Um, and we're gonna go from A14, which is in the same terminal as pin eight of the IC chip, um, to the nearest leftmost um, bus strip hole. So it'll look like that. All right, step three. So we're gonna do a similar thing the opposite way. We're gonna take our jumper wire and go into J14 and then connect it to the outmost um, bus strip like this. Step four, another jumper wire. Da -da -da -da. We're gonna connect this from C15 to H15. And the reason we're doing that is we're connecting pins two and six uh, on the IC chip. And then it should be crossed like this. That looks right. Step five, we are going to connect pin three of the IC to row 19. This is so we can do some resistor capacitor stuff later. So we're gonna go into C16 on one end of the jumper wire and C19 on the other. It looks like that right there. Next, we're gonna bridge the gap by connecting over the ditch in row 19 so we have more terminals that are connected. So we're gonna go from E19 to F19 right over the ditch with a jumper wire. There you go. Bridge the gap. All right, now it's time for the red LED. So when you look at an LED, if you don't know this already, the shorter leg of the LED is called the cathode, that's the negative end, and the longer part is the anode. We're gonna put the cathode into D21, and we're gonna put the anode into D19, a little further up, like this. Next, for the green LED, we're gonna put the long one, the anode, into G21, and the short one into G19. It'll look like that. It's this guy. All right, so next you're gonna want your 470 ohm resistors. And we're gonna connect those to ground and source. So we're gonna go from B21, let's see, to the bottom most, um, connection on ground, looks like that. And then we're gonna do the exact opposite. We're gonna go from I-21 to the topmost connection on voltage. Look like this. You can shorten, you can trim these legs if you don't wanna have all this stuff sticking up high. Although, if you at any point uh, want to actually solder this together, I would recommend not doing that yet. <laughs> All right, so step 10, 
we are going to put some resistance between pin 7 of the IC chip and voltage. So you're going to need your first resistor, the 1K ohm resistor, looks like this. And we're going to go ahead and insert one end of it into J15 and the other end into source voltage. That should look like this. All right, now we're going to insert a capacitor, your 0.1 microfarad capacitor, in between pin 2 and ground. It can go into any of the um, either bottom or top bus in ground. So we're going to go straight from B15 to either hole in ground and that'll look like that. Okay, step 12. Now you're going to put your 10k ohm resistor from H9 to H15. Should look like that. So um, now we want to connect another pin, pin 7 I believe, to where eventually the other metal prong will be that you hold with your fingers. Um, and I want to do that from B15 to B9 with a jumper. But I just realized that I already have a capacitor sitting in B15, so I'm actually going to move it to A15. And now I'm going to put the jumper in B15 to B9. All right, now we have a jumper from B15 to B9, and take note that I moved one prong of the capacitor from B15 to A15 just to make room for that. It's still in the same terminal strip, so it'll still do the same thing. Now we're gonna take two longer jumper wires and use them to simulate the metal prongs that your fingers will touch to activate the um, coin toss, quote unquote. So we're going to take these two guys and we're going to put them in E9 and F9. And we're just going to kind of have them sticking out, so sort of like this. You just kind of stick out. Those will be our prongs. All right, for this last step, I've moved into my bathroom so I can easily turn off the lights to best display the LEDs if this thing works. So <clears throat> now we need to hook up power. So you need a nine volt battery and a nine volt battery snap. And uh, hopefully yours most likely will come already uh, bare wire stranded at the end ready to go. If not, just take a wire stripper and strip off the ends, twist them up with your fingers, you'll be ready. So we're going to take the red lead and we're going to put it um, in the top or bottom rightmost if you're looking at it like this, vertically. If you're looking at it horizontally, it's the top rightmost. But either way, we're going to put it right here into this contact hole just like so. And we're gonna put the black one in the opposite corner. So it's gonna go right here, just like so. And now we're just gonna attach the battery. All right, now we have power. I'm gonna go flip off the lights and I'll take my fingers and we'll touch the two prongs here. We'll hold them and hopefully the lights will start flickering like crazy. And when we let go, hopefully only one of the lights will stay on. Um, and that will signify a sort of heads or tails coin toss. You can still see it. Got my fingers ready. Here we go. One, two, three. Yeah! It's working! I don't know why the red light doesn't show up very well on this camera, but I assure you it's working. And when I let go, only the green stayed on. If we do it again, they flicker. I think you can see the red light is working a little better. Let go. Now only the red light is on. That's it. Uh, that's how a breadboard works. And uh, now you have this cool little machine as well. 
you know, make a circuit board and uh, wire these things up and put them in an enclosure and you can have this nifty little machine you tell your friends to play with. So uh, hopefully this has been helpful. This has been the Psychedelic Cherry, how to use a breadboard. And that's it. Thanks. Please remember to subscribe.